Oh, another rainy day near Seattle, Washington. Who could have guessed? I'm Uncle Nudge, and I've done a pole barn conversion with Lincoln Block. I've done it in the rain. I've done it by myself. Here's the story. So I'm an actual Lincoln Block customer. And fortunately, I live close enough to Lincoln Block headquarters that they personally came out and got me started and away I went. I know they went viral on TikTok, and there's going to be a lot of people that aren't close by that need some instruction or instructional videos. I know Lincoln Block is working on that, but I said, heck, I'm done. I can do a video. So here it is. You walk in, I'll tell you what, it's like your own little lodge compared to that pole building the way it was. Man, what a difference. And it's going to be so well insulated, and it's obviously beautiful. So I guess, you know, you could just have an awesome shop or you could do a home office or a she shed or man cave or a music studio or a guest house or an Airbnb or a business or, I mean, it's it's endless really with Lincoln Block. I've built like a deck, you know, and a playhouse and a shed just with regular stick frame, but... When I went up and saw these guys and saw this product, I was like, man, I, I should be able to do that. Uh, and sure enough, you know, <laughs> you can see I did it. And the nice thing was is I did it during the winter. It's still winter. Uh, it rains a lot here, and I knew I could do it with the roof still on and take the walls off as I went. And so you can see that pile of walls there. You know, something like that beam there, you know, I'm going to cover all that with trim, so it's going to look really nice. I mean, it already does, but uh, and look at some of that wood. It's just so cool, and uh, it's got that wood defender on it. It's an awesome product. So next, let me talk about the tools I use, and probably something you don't have is a 15-inch Hitachi miter saw, but you can find these on Craigslist probably for about $350. And in my opinion, it's the way to go. It cuts the whole block at once. It's a beast. Uh, you'll need some levels, probably two footer and four footer. I like these uh, solo levels because I can see them with my 60 year old eyes. Dewalt cordless tools, grinder, sawzall, circular saw. You need a nice caulk gun because you're going to be doing a lot of caulk. This tip is great for Lincoln block application. You know, you need stuff like a drill driver and speed square and I got staplers for plastic and, uh, you know, chisel, sort of tools. You need a router, a headlamp, a 45 gun that shoots two and a half inch nails. You're going to shoot stainless steel nails. A framing gun that shoots eight penny, two and three eighths galvanized nails. A sledge, you're going to be pounding down the blocks. Maybe some kind of sander, finish sander, whatever. Uh, definitely need a compressor. Probably get a pancake compressor, jigsaw. Uh, I use that mostly for cutting the tops off these. This Dynaflex 230 is an awesome product. Use the cedar tan color, and it's uh, it acts a lot like a glue, but it's a great flexible caulk to and like I say, you use a lot of it last, garbage in a shop vac. Okay, I'm gonna kind of give you the basics of how you put together a Lincoln block. First, you can see I got a little stack of two footers there. Uh, here's a two footer. And basically you've got a tongue and a groove on a block. And then you have these uprights, which are called risers. They're glued on and nailed with two stainless steel nails. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I've got a small wall built here, just for demonstration. And so I'm gonna show you this uh, Dynaflex 230. I've got it open. And this is the tip, and being I've used it, it already is, is full of caulk, and so when you put it on, just that easy, you put it in your gun, and then the pressure, it's, it makes it stay in there. 
So what we do with the block is put the caulk in to the groove, like to fill the whole area. Not doing the ends because I'm not going to have the space to put them in. But this is what's nice about this tip is it goes around these risers real nice. And I know this block's going to stop about here, so that's all the further I'm going with the caulk. Okay, now put the block on. And we'll pound down all the risers. And I'd pound that down, and if there was three more, I'd pound those down. Um, probably look at the side and make sure it's seated in the groove. Uh, another tool I use is just a scrap piece of block that I've cut the tongue off. And you can put it on and use it to hammer the block down good and tight wherever it needs to be and that just keeps it from hitting on this tongue because um, you can do it softly but if you do it harder it will damage them it may even break off so use just make yourself a little tool like this okay so now that this is down we're gonna nail it and so Everywhere where there's a riser, so like here, and you can see there's one there, we're going to put one nail in there. So you can tell there's a riser also because there's two nails below it. Now there's also two nails here, but that's a joint, so you know there's not going to be a riser there. So this one is actually hard to see the nails. But, so anyway, so we've got a block going. Now the next block, say we go get it from a pile. And one thing about Lincoln block is just like a, an eight foot two by four is not eight feet and the ends may not be square. And that's how all Lincoln blocks will need to be cut on both sides. You can see this one's definitely longer than this one. So we'll bring it over to the saw and cut it flush. I like to have a sandpaper right by the saw and I'll hit the outside edge and get any burrs off. That way when you put the joints together, they'll be nice and clean and you won't have to try to do it later. So you can see this one's a little bit longer. This takes a few seconds to do this sandpaper. So now the next block's gonna go on. So one thing about it is the risers. And, and you got risers on here. So if we tried to put this block on, it actually hits that riser when it's flush here. So that won't work. So what you can try to do is turn the block around and see if it works that way. And it does. But there's also other risers that you gotta make sure they all are okay to go down. Um, if you're doing a straight long wall, it's probably pretty easy to do that. When I'm doing the 12 foot walls, um, there's more of looking at the risers and stuff. So now we're gonna take and caulk this side up. So it's the same thing, put it on the inside of the tongue. Same thing here. But, and then we'll do it on this block.
Okay, when you're done, re release your trigger. Otherwise, it just keeps squirting out. Okay, so now when we're making a joint, we did our caulk, but now we're gonna, we're gonna butter up the end. And just right up the middle to the tongue. So when these blocks go together, they're gonna create a seal right there. So now, if we try to put this on, remember this is backwards, it's gonna hit. So we get it on. We pound it. To this one, all those. And then you can pound the end and get it, get it to seal up. Check everything again. Once you pound it over, it may lift up on you. So make sure it's down. Then we'll nail it. And we can see there's a riser here. So we'll nail it there. And that's the only riser in this demonstration. And you also do the back side of them, both sides. Uh, I can't reach it with my current setup, but pretend I did. Okay, then we have something called a splice block or a double block, and it's rounded on one side. And that's so it can go down into the block, into the next block down. And we want it to get this level, basically. So you can see it goes down in there. So that creates a nice joint. So you put that kind of where you got the, Put it right in the middle and pound down and I think you can see let's see if I can do it it's moving this out and you don't reef on this you just pound it in gently and maybe you can see it's going to go into the next block so let's get it fairly level and then for these, we'll nail both of them. Two nails, each side, and then the other side. So now we've got uh, a joint. So then you'd go on to your next one. You'd do it the same way. So there is one thing about joints though. Um, they can't go right like we couldn't have put this one right here for one because the last splice block is in the way. We couldn't get a splice block down there. And also, uh, if there was a riser in the block below, right, like right there, we also couldn't put a, a joint right there because this block would hit that. So you do have to be aware of uh, where your risers are and where your blocks are but after a little learning curve you learn and uh, you can start to just eyeball you can look at your wall you can see the risers there and see if yours fits and um, sometimes i'll just go dry fit them to make sure they're going to work uh, maybe even before i cut the ends so anyway, that's the basics of uh, how you do a Lincoln block wall. Pretty sweet. So I think now it's time to back up. So in 1975, when this pole building was built, I wonder if they thought it was a good looking building. Because if they did, they were wrong. <laughs> but anyway, it was a decent shop. It was definitely cold in the winter. And uh, something needed to be done. And so I asked the guys at Lincoln Block if we could do anything, and they said, yeah, it's an unconventional build, but, you know, if you've got a little experience, you can probably figure it out. And so I did. I knew it was going to rain a lot, and so my idea was to do it with the roof of my head. So I started out cutting at the bottom nailer, the metal all the way around, and, and everything off the post. So basically it was just the post. Then I got my first Lincoln block as a pattern, so I knew where to put the lag bolts that go into the cement. 
So I measured three inches from the outside of the cement and used five and a half inch lag bolts and a bunch of glue. You can see a line there I drew with the two by eight. And then I leveled those both ways because that's what the Lincoln block is going to sit on. And then I filled any excess underneath with uh, DAP touch and, touch and foam spray. And then Lincoln block has this product that uh, is pretty awesome. It, at 25% compression, it is waterproof. So and then I put the uh, couplers on and the all thread screws. Those are half inch. And then what you do is you route out the Lincoln block to accept these plates, uh, adjustable plates, and then you put on your washer and nut. Tighten those down, you know, keep them level because uh, that's basically the foundation of your Lincoln block. So real important. Then I had one whole uh, level done, one course around the whole building. And I tell you what, it was pretty freaking cool. It was like, wow, this is happening. And then on the bottom one, I used some uh, Flex Seal. And it's a rubberized coating, and it's just an extra protection layer. And so I finished that whole thing around the side and let it dry. And then I uh, got some 8-inch flashing and some 10-inch for some areas and put it on all the way around, and it comes up uh, flush with the uh, tongue portion, not the tongue. And then you put the Z flashing on, and that fits in the groove of the Lincoln block. So this is kind of a little sequence, kind of like the video I did that shows, this just shows you put a lot of glue around those plates, but here's the block going in at the joint and get it uh, even with that bridge and where to nail it and it shows it a uh, riser there and I had my wife working outside with the nail gun it worked out really good on a, like a Sunday and so then we had our second level because the first level is covered and then pretty soon I went got going and I had four levels up and so or five levels up and it was uh, time to do some foam uh, this corner detail shows the splines actually on my existing posts and you level those up and then the Lincoln block follows those and you nail the Lincoln block on the ends to those splines two nails each and you just work your way up to the top and here shows uh, from the front look at that Lincoln block man that was cool and at night I'd taken one garage door off and then I took the other one off and all the hardware off. And uh, it looked a lot different in the shop after that. It was pretty darn cool. It was kind of another view of it. It's so weird not seeing those garage doors there. And uh, there's the garage doors. I was taking the hardware off. And uh, you see all those boards on the right? Those are Lincoln Block Spline. And they're up to about 10 feet. And uh, rainy night after that. And you can see the splines on the posts, uh, light colored. And they don't go all the way up to the top. You add on to those later. Here's me after work, and I'd have to take all my tools in the wheelbarrow out to the shed so I could lock them up. Here shows the door going up, and it's got double splines. And uh, I'm going to have a raised floor. So they go in the second block is where they started. And so as you do the blocks, uh, you bring them right up to the, to the edge of the uh, double spline uh, without exceeding it because later you're going to put uh, a foam product and three quarter inch plywood on there to actually frame it. So now, speaking of foam, I had Andrew from Lincoln Block come out and he did the foam for me. And a little bit later, uh, you're actually going to see him live, and he's going to explain uh, what, how you foam, basically. So here you can see I got more spline, or, well, same splines, and and uh, more blocks. The wall's getting higher, uh, higher and higher. You can see a window starting to form there, and. Uh, goes pretty quick. Uh, here's another door I started. And you can see at the top of a lot of these, I have a 
a beam that goes across there and it holds those splines in place for the windows and the door, holds them level and the proper distance away. So when you put the blocks on, they don't move. Now, man, it's really starting to look like something. And so I took the metal off the front and uh, just it's crazy. Here's kind of a, the windows. What you do is you cut off the risers and below the uh, edge of the top board. And I'll kind of go into that later. So here you'd see the doorway. Uh, actually, there's a cross uh, block in there. And what that does is it, it gives you a chance to level up the two walls. So you keep them both level with each other. And it's also a stability for the doorway and windows. Then uh, the weather got nice and I took all the metal off except for one little section there that was nailed in. Eventually cut it off and uh, it's really weird to see outside uh, views I've never seen before. And uh, from the front and it's like wow. Uh, this actually Lincoln Block used this on uh, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, I think. And so that was really cool to see that. Uh, then the weather was going to change. I knew there was going to be wind, and there was. And the rains were going to start. There you can see a cross block on the window, too. And you can see my cross blocks up there holding things in place. Now, in this window, uh, it's a two windows side by side. And you can see I left the tongue on. Uh, you cut the tongues off everywhere where the actual window is going to be. I'll tell more about that later. Eh, it's starting to look like something. Pretty exciting. There's uh, more Lincoln block. You know, you got to manage that. There's my wife up. Andrew had been up to foam, and, and it does splatter a little bit, and it hardens, and she's uh, getting the foam out of the top uh, tongue and you know, tongue section. So that way when you put the next block on it, it uh, d that doesn't interfere with the block placement. And got some, uh, those windows, that's the top of the windows now. So I got up to that level in the first section. And it's like, wow, that's what the windows are. And then the door, I got to the top. And the double window there to the top. And uh, it looks like that whole side is to the top. And this is a view out one window. It's pretty cool. I lifted up the plastic. And now that whole front is, and side, is to the top of the windows and the top of the doors. Uh, still had some to go in the back there. And looks like I'm just about done. And then... Uh, with the rains, I had to put more plastic on in the wind. And here's uh, putting up these little blocks. Actually, they're they're ends of blocks, and uh, you put them against the um, splines that go in between the windows, and they basically as, act like spacers. So when you put the window framing in and the trim around the windows, you have. Uh, you know, an even surface. And so there's uh, a window detail. You actually cut those splines to fit and then you nail them in. And that's going to be the surface you use to uh, do your window frames. And that's what it looks like open with them cut. And that's the tops of them. And you go through and do all that. And then it uh, snowed, which was pretty unexpected. And so this... Uh, I finished up the window sills and uh, filled them in. And this kind of shows the sequence of how you do it. The upper left, you can see I'm with the Sawzall, I'm, I'm cutting off the uh, tongue so it looks like that surface below. And then I cut the blocks to size. Then I pound them in with a block to level, and then you nail them. Looking like something. I even see a little sun. Then I started doing the stain. I was like, this is good weather. So uh, I decided to start putting on the uh, wood defender. 
uh, cedar color and thought I'd take some pictures and show you how it goes on. It sure looks a lot different. Um, but man, what a great product. It goes on so nice and works so good and it's uh, self-leveling so you really saturate it on. And that was the next morning after I stained it a little bit frosty and uh, more blocks. And then I started having to use a scaffold and so I just made my own scaffolds and I could get up there and I finished those side uh, walls up to their maximum height. And then I was going to start work on the gable ends. Up above the uh, truss was a kind of a tricky spot and you can see I made a compound cut to just slide in there real nice and I didn't have to but I did. So working on the gable ends and I'm uh, cutting the corners so uh, Andrew can foam in there easier but they get covered up with the 2x6 so it's really no big deal. And this is the view from up off on the scaffold. You know, so you do, do some climbing. And this is where uh, Andrew actually comes and foams. And I said, hey, let's uh, film this so people know what's going on with how the foam works and stuff. And so that was pretty cool of them. And uh, they needed a video anyway, so I'm like, ah, let's do it. We got Andrew here. All right, hey everybody, it's Andrew with Lincoln Block. So we get a lot of questions about the foaming process for our product and also the foam kits themselves. So I'm gonna go through this foam kit and kind of show you guys everything that's in it and uh, show you how to set it up. So first off, we'll get our tape off of here. These are, this is the 600 kit and this is what your standard 600 kit is gonna look like when you unbox it. So first, we're gonna take out these hoses. They come with the kit. With the 600 kits, they come detached, so I'll show you how to hook those up a little bit later on. We're gonna set those to the side for now. And you're gonna get your tips, your gloves, a wrench to put the hoses on, and the Vaseline. And I'll show you how to use all that here in a second. Next, we got your safety booklet with a few instructions on there, but we're gonna skip that today because you got me. And now, we're going to take out, this is the part A of the kit. Um, so we have two parts of this foam kit. Basically what happens is these two chemicals are going to mix and create the chemical reaction in the foam. So now we'll bust open box B. And be aware when you're foaming, a lot of times the red likes to run out before the white. Um, with the correct mixture, you're gonna to wanna to get it as close as possible, but it's okay if you have a little bit left in the red. So we'll go ahead and take this out of here. Good. So, next I'm gonna show you guys how to hook these hoses up. And beware, the wrenches that come in these kits are not the best, so if you prefer using a different wrench, I'm not exactly sure what size it is, but you can use like a crescent with an adjustable, uh, adjustable mouth if you want to do that. So when you get your hoses, you're going to get one with little red stripes in it. The other one's just going to be completely clear. So we're going to hook the one with the red stripes up to the red tank. Pretty simple. Just kind of get it on there. Start hand tightening it at first. You're going to get to a point where obviously you can't do it much more. And once you get to that point, go ahead and take your wrench. Like I said, these aren't the greatest wrenches. So I'm going to do my best. Kind of got to force it on there. Okay, so now we got our red hose on. So we're basically just going to repeat the process on this side. Very simple. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. This one's going on a little bit smoother so I can get it hand tight a little bit better. Maybe I only need a few turns to tighten it. All right guys, so now we got our hoses on the tank. So the next thing we're gonna do is unpack our little baggie they gave us here. So once you unzip this, you're gonna get a variety of tips in here. You get two colors. You got your yellow ones and you got your clear ones right here. So with Lincoln Block, we like to use the clear and I'll tell you why. 
These yellow ones have a fan tip in them and they're used mostly for traditional stick frame, any type of insulation you gotta do in between the rafters, stuff like that, um, and your joists, stuff like that. Um, for these, it's just a normal open-ended spray tip. So we get a better stream of foam going into the wall, which allows us to get deeper down through multiple courses. So we like these ones better. Um, you're also gonna get a pair of gloves. It looks like they gave me some extra ones in this kit. They thought I had an extra hand. Um, these are nice because the stuff gets messy and it's not fun to get off. So we like to use the gloves when we do it. And then last, you're gonna get some Vaseline. Now you're gonna put the Vaseline before and after you use this kit. So I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Now first things first, we wanna get the pressure going through our hoses. So what you're gonna do is just turn these counterclockwise, open them up, and we like to open them up all the way. When you start spraying, you might notice your tanks are not distributing uh, their contents evenly. If that's the case, then you can make adjustments as you go. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this Vaseline and I'm going to squirt it into the nozzle end of the tip or of the gun, excuse me. Smear it around just a little bit. So I'll just take that and then kind of smear it around. It's going to help you with your seal once you get the tip on. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use a fan tip because I have to get to this job after I don't want to waste one. And we're just going to throw this out right after we do the test spray. But we always recommend before you start spraying into your surface, you want to make sure you test and make sure your foam is mixing correctly. So to do that, we're just going to take one of the cardboard boxes that the kit came in and we're just going to spray a little foam into it. Watch and make sure it's growing properly. And once you got that, you should be good to go. So we're gonna, let me do this again so you guys can see. You have these little notches on the, uh, on the gun and you got these little cutouts on the tip. So what you're gonna do is just line those up, turn them, I guess if it's facing out, it would be counterclockwise to your left. So yeah, you just turn that and then the, you'll feel it kind of click and lock in. And then you have this little stopper switch right here. If you push it all the way in, it's off. So it's in the off position when you're like that. And when you click it out, you're ready to fire. So now we're gonna test our foam. Get one of these boxes up here. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little bit of this and spray it. And now we'll wait. And we're gonna watch the foam. Let's spray a little more. We're gonna watch the foam and make sure that it's properly growing. Sometimes it takes a little bit. But as you can see, if you watch closely, the foam is expanding nice and evenly. You want to watch out for glossiness in the foam. If it looks glossy or soupy, that means that your mixture is not correct. Um, and if that's the case, you might want to check your tip. You might have an issue in your tip. Um, check your hoses, make sure everything's working properly. So now we can see that the foam is growing pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quickly and it is expanding much more than what I had sprayed. So that's good, that's a good sign. Sometimes I go in and test it, give it a little poke, make sure it's solidifying a little bit. And from there, we should be good to go to start spraying into our wall. Say we're done with our foaming and we're gonna show you how to properly clean up and store your kit. So a lot of times with these 600 kits, you know, you'll get the job done, you know, still have a little bit of foam remaining. So you're gonna to wanna to have, Dab does a poly clean. Um, this is a foam cleaner and it's gonna help you clean your, your tools up and your spray gun after you're done using it. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna click from the on position to the off position in our gun. So we'll make sure that that's locked so we know that we're not gonna get any overspray or spray on accident. We're gonna take our tip off, right? And you'll see that there's a little bit of foam in here and after a long job, you're gonna get a lot more buildup. This is a little bit less because it's only our demonstration tip. So what you're gonna do is take your PolyClean, insert this nozzle, very simple, and then you're going to 
spray inside the gun and it's going to disintegrate any type of foam, anything that's in there. And if you need, you can kind of dig in there with your finger and try to clean out a little bit. Sometimes I use a tool, like maybe a piece of wood or a paper clip to kind of clear that out, but it looks pretty clean. It's mostly just Vaseline in there, which is good because right after we do that, we're going to take our Vaseline and once again, go over the tip of the gun to make sure that there's no mixture of any secretion that comes out while it's in storage. And if you're going for over a week time without using these kits and you have them in storage, make sure that you go in and you spray just a little bit of foam out so you can make sure and clear those hoses. We recommend that you store these in a heated environment. So anywhere from 75 to 80 degrees. Um, I see a lot of comments that are talking about, you know, their mixture wasn't right or it came out soupy, it came out glossy. And a lot of times the reason for that is, is the chemical is not at the right temperature for reaction. So what we like to do is when we store them, we put them in a heated cabinet that keeps them around the correct temperature, which like I said, is around 75 to 80 degrees. 80 degrees. And uh, that way when you get out to your job, your, your chemicals are warm and you won't have any issues with the reaction taking place when you try to spray foam. Before I put my respirator on, I wanted to kind of just show you guys what we're doing so you can get an idea on how this product works with our Lincoln Block uh, walls. So normally you'd probably be starting to foam once you're four or five courses up, but since we're towards the top of this structure, we're just doing a little bit of finish work. So we're not going to be foaming too deep. It's only about two courses deep. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is just spraying into this cavity right here, watching very closely for when the, where the foam's at. You, a little is a lot in this situation because this is expanding foam. So if you do too much, you're going to have to start cutting out foam and, and stuffing it in other places in the wall. And that's just going to make you take longer. So um, I want to make one more point before I start. You want to make sure when you're doing this stuff that you make sure you have all your safety equipment, make sure you have some gloves, make sure you have some type of glasses, and make sure you have some type of mask or respirator, especially if you're working in an enclosed environment where the vapors can, can stay in that area. You want to make sure that you're not breathing that in because this is a, a, a toxic product and you want to make sure that, that you're protected. All right, y'all, so a few more things. So we always recommend to start foaming your wall about four to five courses down so when you have about four to five courses of unfoamed wall that's when you want to start now i want to add that when you're doing this you want to make sure that you're not just filling one section all the way to the top you want to kind of evenly distribute your foam throughout there's a couple reasons for this number one is you're working with expanding foam so you might fill it to a certain level thinking that the foam is going to stop but it's going to keep rising and you're going to waste a bunch of material and another reason is being that this is a chemical so you're going to get some heat when it reacts and you don't want too much heat to go on while you're while you're spraying your foam so when you do it in sections you kind of let the chemical set up cool down and then you can go for your next uh for your next layer so when you're filling your courses you want to make sure like i said earlier that you're doing it incrementally because you're working with an expanding foam so you don't know exactly where it's going to stop and that leads me to my next point when you're Say you're unfinished with your, the building of your wall and you need to add courses on top. Well, then you want to make sure that you're stopping just below the top of the course because if you get overfill or anything like that, you're going to have to cut it out to make sure the placement of your next block is accurate. I would definitely recommend you go on DAP's website and confirm for yourself along with everything you're learning into this video just to make sure your process is smooth and safe. Thanks, Andrew. Uh -uh. Speaking of safety, I'll give you a tip here. If you have a long open area at the end of a block, um, the boards could flex when the saw hits it. And so you, what you want to do is insert a scrap uh, piece of spline and you know hold it tight and you'll get a nice flush cut at the end and you'll stay safe. So since the foam was in, I finished uh, building the gable ends to the very top and he put some more foam in. And then I stained them with the Wood Defender product. And then I took off the plastic and voila. Man, didn't that freaking look good? That's a Lincoln block. I did that myself. Sweet. You know, what I did was an unconventional build. 
and in the pole barn conversion. And uh, it could be really straightforward. I imagine it depends on your pole building and the age of it. And if the posts are fairly straight, mine weren't. Um, but I managed to figure it out because, you know, I got a little experience building. Even though I've never been a contractor or, or you know, been in the building trade. Um, but I think a, a more conventional build, you know, like let's say a 16 by 12, if you wanted like a home office or something. Um, I don't think you need a great skill level for that. You know, you can't be afraid of your tools and stuff. And you got to probably, you know, climb up on ladders. And But uh, it's definitely doable if you, you know, built some stuff. And But otherwise, there's a definite opportunity for contractors to get started building Lincoln Block. I mean, I, I'm 60. If I was 45, man, I would look into this as a business, you know, whether I was just building uh, home offices or, you know, if you're a more well-established contractor, you know, start building houses. Um, I guess you can go up to four stories high with Lincoln Block and you can go big. Um, but, uh, you know, you can build smaller houses. I know they, uh, there's been, you know, a number of tiny houses built with Lincoln Block. But uh, I think there's a great opportunity for, you know, ADUs or whatever it is, you know, kind of like I was talking about earlier. And so I'd say, you know, whoever you are, take a look at Lincoln Block's website if you haven't already. And, you know, if you're, if you're serious about it, give them a call. On a final note, once I get my building done, totally, probably late spring, early summer, I'm guessing, I'm going to build a 16 by 12 conventional build Lincoln Block as a music studio. And I may be filming that step by step. And so if that's something you're interested in, uh, look me up.